everyone and welcome back to the channel. If you've been following me, you'll know that recently I've uh, released some videos about modifications I've made to my Skywatcher 130 PDS. The mods I've done have been uh, painting the uh, inside of the scope of any reflective surfaces like the silver on the uh, focus tube um, and also painting the outside of the mirrors matte black, uh, the edges and the backs just to try and improve contrast on the scope. And on my very last video I flocked the inside of the scope to again help with internal reflections and contrast. All of these mods have made improvements to the scope and have also been a lot of fun to do. Out of the box, the 130 PDS is a fantastic scope and to be honest with you, if you're not comfortable doing any modifications, you don't have to. Um, I, I've always been extremely happy with the uh, results that this scope has given me back. So you might ask, why have I done the modifications? Well, as part of me, I like to get my hands dirty, I like projects and uh, definitely on the, you know, when the weather's not quite right for astrophotography, it's really great to have some projects that you can get your teeth into and, uh, and do. I found that all the uh, mods have actually made improvements and I've also had a great satisfaction from doing things to the scope and, uh, and, and, and making it better in my mind. So um, that's why I've done them and I've really enjoyed it. I'm more than likely continue playing with this uh, for a very long time. Any changes that I can make, I will. Um, I haven't got any more planned uh, changes apart from aesthetics, but we'll get to that on another video. Um, sorry, I live near an airport, so plenty of planes flying over. Um, the only change uh, that I've seen I am interested in looking into further is you can actually get some print 3D print some different kind of shapes to clip on the spider at the front and that can change the shape of the diffraction spikes and, and make things look a little bit different so I may have a look at playing with those ideas and seeing what comes up and uh, what I can do. So just a disclaimer to any of the astrophotography uh, users wives that are watching where I have been blamed for their purchases and changes uh, it's not my fault. So we'll just jump to a video I took in the workshop where I go over some of the 3D printed parts and other changes we've made to the scope. So at the Practical Astronomy Show I met Adam. He runs the Facebook uh, group for the 130 PDS. If you're not a member I'm going to put a link in the description below you should join it. It's a very small group, but nice bunch of people, and we'll share tips with the uh, scope and obviously share images that we've taken with it. So Adam and I were talking about the light leak at the back of the uh, scope and the fact that there's no fan there. And between us, we kind of came up with an idea of an end cap and Adam went away and wrote um, an STL file. And so we've actually printed a 3D printed an end cap with a fan incorporated in there. We've also, we talked about the piece of uh, paper that you get at the back of the mirror. This is at the back of the scope with the three bits of cork that the um, mirror sits on. Thought we could definitely do a better job with that. And also we talked about putting a mirror mask on to cover where the clips catch the edge of the mirror. So another person I'd like to mention is one of my channel members, which is uh, Andy Bennett. Um, and he really kindly uh, who has a 3D printer and printed all these parts for me and also really helped with the mask um, STL file. And we came up with a really nice thin f um, mirror mask. Um, we also decided to replace this and we did it with a piece of this, which is foam card. So A, it's waterproof, and uh, it's also got a little bit of give to it. So nice for the mirror to sit on. The, unfortunately, with the, car the card that comes with the scope, um, as you can see, it gets wet with the dew, and then it starts to, as paper does, uh, crinkle. 
And of course that was then leaving gaps and letting light in. So let me show you the parts that we've printed and what we've come up with. So this is the mirror cell and the mirror mask is on there. And what we did was initially we, we thought we would make a mask like this where it would go on the top of the, the uh, clips and uh, screw down. But what we was a little bit concerned about was because of the gap, um, there's, a, there's an opportunity there of causing a shadow. And we wasn't sure whether that would actually happen or not, but we decided to go for a very, very sort of wafer thin type of plastic that we could print off. And it just literally sits under the lip and held on by the clips. So as you can see there, you don't get any of the clips intruding. Now, they only intrude by about one and a half mil. So in total, you've lost just three mil all the way around. So across the diameter there. So that's been one thing that we've done. And on the back, I can just turn this over, can show you there that we've got the um, foam card insert to help hold the mirror in place and uh, stop any light leaks. Now, talking of light leaks, there are some leaks at the back of the scope, and this is where we came up with this idea of the 3D printed cap. And uh, it's got air vents on the back for where we put our fan. And this literally just slips over the back of the scope, hardly weighs hardly anything. And I've soldered in, I bought, uh, let me show you these, just a pack from eBay. Just, I used these uh, RCA females because these leads are very easy to make. And uh, that runs from the Pegasus power box and it can be on auto due. And this is what puts the power in. Females in now, I've soldered it together and the fan is literally just held off. It needs to be held off a little bit from the uh, surface because I did find that the you need that open side there so that the air is blowing inwards. And what I found was the um, fan would foul ever so slightly on the surface of the cover. So just having those little Velcro there means it can be replaced if anything goes wrong with it. It's nice and light and it all works really well and just plug in at the back there and uh, that helps stop a lot of the light leaks and adds a fan to the back of the 130 PDS. Just going to show you now the fitting of the cap to the mount. Um, I'm going to plug it into my Pegasus Powerbox Advance which is on at the moment and set to uh, give off some anti-dew. I normally have it on the auto dew setting so it will increase the fan as it's required but as you can see there spinning nicely and the cap literally just goes over the back of the scope and fits very snugly and it holds on fine but just to make sure and I do have a dew strap anyway that I always put on the uh, scope this will help just secure it that bit better so I'm just going to fit this dew strap on just get that under there and then this gives you a nice little bit of heat source and this goes into the other dew output on the dew controller on the power box advance and that has been more than enough to keep the scope completely clear of any dew whatsoever and works brilliantly and of course this is helping stop the light leaks that you do get at the back of these scopes so a really nice addition and so we got the mask on the mirror as well and um, I must be honest that since I flopped the tube and done these other improvements I have seen massive improvements in the images and I'm really pleased with the result. So you might notice the rig is on a slightly different mount than what you would get it on. Uh, this is something that I put together. I've seen other astrophotographers do similar things and I thought it looked really smart. So we're going to jump to a video now showing how I built this uh, little saddle and the parts that I've put inside it, which is the mini PC by Mealy, the Quieter 2, Pegasus Powerbox Advance, and I've got a little Wi-Fi router up here, which also gives out a hotspot. So if I'm in a remote location, I can connect to that hotspot, even if I've got no phone signal or Wi-Fi, and connect to the Mealy through desktop, uh, remote desktop on Windows, and I can control the whole rig 
remotely. I can do that from my phone, from my iPad, or from my laptop. So it gives me a lot of flexibility and uh, means I can sit somewhere in the warm if it's really cold outside and I don't have to sit outside and manually do everything. Uh, here it is completed with the two Rossmandy plates and the risers and my plan is to put the mini PC and I haven't measured it but I'm hoping the mini PC and the Pegasus power box will both go it here, either side by side or one on top of the other. We'll, um, we'll have a look at that in a moment but uh, this is going to be the new mount for the 130 PDS with all of the extra additions that I've made to it. And what we're looking to do is hopefully PC's got no outputs at the top so if I mount the PC like that with the aerial lead sticking out so they can get a uh, a signal and then we've got the other part here the only thing that comes out the back of the Pegasus power box is the sensor for uh, temperature and humidity for the um, auto juice sensor feature I'm just having a look at that because the outputs there could be an issue and the other idea I had was this could possibly go on top but that's going to be too tight so the only other option would be if we had something like that and then this was separate I'm just worried about the USBs at the bottom here how much they stick out because they've got quite a reach on them if I put that in there push that up see that is going to interfere with the Pegasus power box so that will so the only other way is if the Pegasus power box was actually mounted up on the top plate there that gives space underneath and then they can come out there and I know the velcro is strong enough to hold it so I think that will be the way I'm going to mount everything and that way nothing's gonna get in the way of anything else oh, looking good so that's the mini PC in place so what we need to do now is uh, get the top plate fitted to the 130 PDS this will be fun I think I know where everything goes. We'll find out later. Is this? This is going to be the top. I do believe. Now if I think about my scope, it sits low. So yeah, make that at the top. Okay, we want to now put the power box advance in about there. Now I've got, actually got a pad here that I was using. I reckon we can reuse this. <laughs> so she'll always be need twisting. One of the things I didn't like with the uh, Pegasus Focus Cube was the output for the power. 
just fouled against the rings on this. The spacing is not designed as narrow as a EAF and that, and it does make life a little bit awkward. Let me just see if the power lead's gonna go in without any issues. That's gonna be fine there. So this is gonna be my scope position. It's mostly gonna need balancing and twisting. It's gonna need a lot of balancing and twisting, I reckon. That's the new plate at the bottom, all fitted with the mini PC and Pegasus power box in there. And I really am happy with that. I think that's a very smart solution, much neater. And I have got some space to tidy some cables away into. Um, but my future plan is actually to get cables that are a bit more uh, the right length for everything. Because once I bit this built, I don't want to take it apart. So all the cables will stay uh, fixed in place, which uh, is a nice thing to have. So I'll just slide it on and off the uh, scope. As I mentioned earlier, I've been really pleased with the performance of this scope, especially after the modifications I've made. And I'd like to just share a few images with you that I've taken recently to show you how well the scope is performing. So there you have it, that's the Skywatcher 130 PDS with uh, some modifications that you can do. And you can do this to really any Newtonian scope. Um, you just would need to change the size of certain things, but all of these mods can be done. None of them are particularly expensive and they're all quite easy to do. Um, I've actually, I actually get a lot of fun out of doing things like this, so it's, uh, it's great. Please keep your comments coming though. If you've got any more suggestions for me, I'd love to read them. Um, not sure I'm gonna do them all, but I will definitely look at them and take them on board because I do like to uh, share ideas with people. And uh, I've really, really appreciated all of the help and support and, uh, and ideas that you've given me so far. I want to say thank you ever so much to everybody that supports me for you liking my videos and commenting and people that support the channel even further the members and patreon members i really want to say thank you ever so much that extra support means a lot and it really does help i have plans uh, in the pipeline to share with you some exclusive videos um, so keep your eyes open for those and i hope that they are something that will be of use to you I really enjoy doing my channel. It is a lot of work, but um, it, it's, 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 it's great fun. And um, I just absolutely love this hobby. I really do. And this is about to undertake a project with some other YouTubers. Um, and we're going for a very faint target, which is the uh, Flying Bat and Squid Nebula. And I'm really hoping that this uh, will bring back some really great results uh, that I can combine with some other friends and hopefully share with you a great image. But until next time, I'd like to wish you all clear skies.
and thanks ever so much for watching. Take care.